Hey friends, Peter Faustiano here. Well, this just happened. I went ahead and picked up the Canon EOS M6 Mark II. And in today's video, I'm gonna run through the menu items and kind of show you how I set up the camera. And if you're new to the M system, maybe this will help you. There's a lot of crossover between all of the M series cameras, the M50, the M6, the M5, all that stuff. So I thought this would be a good starting point. A quick disclaimer, this is how I set my camera up. You don't have to set it up the exact same way that I do because your workflow is gonna be different than mine. But this is how I have mine set up and as you get into your own photography and video shooting, you can kind of mess around and tweak these. But if you're new to the system, hopefully this just gives you a, a stepping stone of how to operate the camera or to set it up. So let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is make sure that your camera setting or your dial on top is set to manual. That way it's gonna open up all the different menu options when you get in there. Turn the camera on. Once you have the camera on, you wanna go ahead and select the menu button down at the bottom. And this opens up your first screen, which is the camera icon, item number one. My image quality is set to raw. If you don't wanna shoot raw photos, if you don't think you're gonna post process on a computer, you can just set it to JPEG. I want the freedom to adjust my photos a little bit. And I also have the Canon app. So whenever I download the pictures to my phone, they automatically get downloaded in JPEG. So I just keep my camera on raw. But if you don't wanna keep it on raw, all you have to do is select the JPEG icon and click OK and you should just be shooting JPEG. But if you want to do JPEG and RAW, you can click on the RAW plus and that will do JPEG and RAW. Still image ratio is three to two. Image review is off. Every time I take a picture, I don't want to be distracted by the picture showing up on the back screen, so I shut that off. Lens aberration correction, I think, is automatically adjusted for you. You don't have to turn that on or off. Flash control, if you're using flash, I don't really necessarily use a flash, so I leave that alone. My drive mode is on high. You can sh set it to whatever you want. I just have this set on, on high, so let me see if this will work. So high mode sounds like this. Pretty impressive. So I just keep it at high. And then the raw burst mode I have disabled. This is a function where I believe it does a pre-buffer and I think you can take up to like 30 pictures. Um, but that's gonna be for a different video. Moving on to camera settings number two. Exposure compensation, I just leave that alone. ISO speed settings, I don't mess around with that. But you can go in there and adjust you know, your ISO ranges and stuff like that. I just leave it alone. ISO speed settings, leave that alone as well. Auto light optimizer, don't do anything to that. High tone priority, that's off. I think it comes off, I don't, I don't deal with that one. Menu number three, metering mode, I have, to, I have set to evaluative metering. Metering timer, this just comes default eight seconds. Exposure simulation enabled. I believe that is also a feature that comes as default. So camera setting, menu number four, white bounce, I, I don't mess with. Custom white bounce, I don't do anything. Uh, all the way down to the picture style, I do. So I set the picture style to neutral. Since I'm shooting raw, I want the flattest image possible. That way I can retain as much detail as I can in my original image that I can manipulate. You just click on that and you can just scroll down to whatever it is that you want. I've selected neutral, so that's where I'm gonna keep it. Next menu item, long exposure. I don't think I do anything on any of these. Focus bracketing, I think this is gonna be a cool feature that I'm gonna try out much later on, and again, another video. So camera settings, menu number five, I just leave everything the way that it is. Number six, touch, touch shutter is disabled, that way, you know, every time I, I touch the back of the screen, it doesn't take a picture, so I just leave that alone. Everything else on this one, I just leave as the default. Moving on, 
So the AF operation I have set to servo. servo. If you have it set to one shot, you have pressed the shutter, it'll focus on the subject and take a picture. And then you have to re-release the shutter and follow the object and then push the shutter halfway down again to refocus. If you have it set on servo and you have like a moving subject, if you have pressed the shutter and you're tracking your object, the object will stay in focus even if you're taking pictures. So I keep mine on servo since I'm taking pictures of birds and wildlife and they're constantly moving. I keep the servo on. My autofocus method is autofocus face detect with tracking. So this is just gonna lock onto the face and it'll track the face no matter where it is on the screen. So I have face tracking enabled. Eye detection, autofocus is also enabled. This one is a little bit tricky. I kind of go in here back and forth and turn it on, turn it off sometimes. So the eye detection, autofocus, anytime there's a person in the frame, it'll recognize the face and it'll start tracking it. And then when you get close enough, it'll detect the eye. That way, if you're taking portraits or close-ups, uh, you don't miss your focus. Continuous autofocus, I just have dis I have that as disabled. Everything else I keep as is. Oh, sorry, I don't. The autofocus assist beam I have shut to off because this is on the front of the camera. This will start to blink red or just kind of throw out a beam and it's just annoying. So I, just, I shut that off. So moving on to the camera settings menu number eight, you have your manual focus peaking settings. This is when you change the camera from autofocus to manual focus and a red highlight, blue highlight, or yellow highlights will surround the edges of your subject so you know you have it in crisp focus. I believe when you're shooting slow motion, you lose the autofocus ability on the camera or it doesn't work all that great, so manual focus works really well when you're, when you're dealing with a subject. And when you do, you just click on that peaking, you turn on your levels, you can go high or low, I just keep mine on high. Color, you can, you can change your colors from red, yellow to blue. I find that red stands out the most on the things that I take pictures of, so I keep it on red. But you can mess around that and do what you want. Internal stabilization settings I have to enabled, and that's when you're shooting video, and I'll get to that a little bit later. Moving on to menu number nine under the camera settings. This is your movie recording quality, so when you're shooting video on this, you can set it to whatever frame rates you want. Currently, I don't have the firmware update, but eventually you'll be able to shoot 4K 24 frames per second, but right now I'm, I only have 30 frames per second. So any of the video shooting that I have, I'm gonna be using my M50 until the firmware update comes to this one. So I have that set to 30 frames per second on 1080p. This is the default setting. So if you're taking pictures and you wanna quickly start recording something and you don't want to change your your mode you can just immediately hit the record button and this is what it's going to record in so this is your default recording button if you want to just immediately take video without shooting or changing your dial from manual mode to video recording so going on to the sound recording the sound recording is going to be another completely separate video i use external mics and the preamps in the camera are no good. So I actually had to go in and change my recording level to 20 clicks from the far right. And as you see, as I'm talking, I'm not clipping above 12. And basically you wanna keep it right at around minus 12 decibels. And you don't wanna go up to zero, otherwise your audio gets blown out. So with the combination of the microphones that I have, along with the preamp in the camera, I've adjusted it and settled on this configuration. If you don't have external microphones, then just keep this on, on auto and you should be fine. So you can kind of see right there, I'm peaking on this one based on my external microphone and the camera setting itself, which is no good. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that back to manual and you can see that the levels bounce down or are reduced quite a bit. 
So going back to the menu, movie servo autofocus I have enabled and auto slow shutter is off. I don't do anything with the play menu, the blue play menu. So I'll go ahead and just scroll through that. I highly suggest that you hook up Wi-Fi Bluetooth. That's also gonna be a separate video, but this one is where you have your Canon Connect app and you can remotely control your camera. You can also transfer pictures so you can share to social media immediately. So when you set that up, it's pretty intuitive. It, it walks you through all the steps that you need to do. And again, I will definitely be creating a video showing how to set that up. Let's give you onto the wrench menu. Pretty sure this is, um, most of it is set to the default. So I have my filing number set to continuous. Every time I take a picture, it records picture one, two, three, and every time you, the next day comes or the next time you turn the camera back on, uh, I don't think it resets to zero. So I have my continuous shooting. Auto rotate, I have this set as a default. Format card, when you wanna format your card, just kinda of click that, hit okay. And then when you are all set, ready to go, you have a clean card. Make sure you have everything backed up before you format cards. So I have the mode guide disabled. If I have this enabled, every time I change the, the dial at the top from video mode to something else, this menu pops up and you have to you know click on the screen or half press the shutter button to get rid of it. So that's annoying. What I'll end up doing is just pushing that to disable and that way anytime I change modes on the screen I don't have to worry about that extra menu popping up. So mode guide I have disabled, feature guide I have enabled, I'm not really too sure um, what happens if you shut that off. I think I had that on and off enabled and disabled. I didn't notice any difference on anything so I just keep it enabled. Wrench number two. Economy mode I have off, power saving is all default, display brightness default. I set, you have to set your time and date up as soon as you turn the camera on. So I have all that stuff set up there. Sensor cleaning, I changed. So default, it comes out as it automatically cleans the sensor when you turn the camera on or off. Whenever I turn the camera on, sometimes I'm in a rush and it, and it sits there for a little bit in cleaning the sensor. So I have it just to clean the sensor when I power off. Touch control, I have on standard. Beeps, I have disabled because I don't want just my camera making a whole bunch of noises as I'm navigating through stuff and taking pictures. Resolution, auto, that's off. Everything here, shutter button, function moves, all that stuff is just all default. So moving on to the wrench, menu number four. Shooting information display. This is when you're looking through the EVF or the back of the camera. This kind of sets up whatever, whatever you want to show as information. I have mine set to number three. This is the one that you that I've played with for a long time and eventually settled on, on what I have here. If you have the EVF um, hooked up, you have you have some extra selections that you can that you can like move and adjust your thumb uh, to where you want the autofocus points to be. So an additional option that you have is this electronic viewfinder. So this EVF that gets attached will open up a different menu option. And this is the touch and drag autofocus setting. So when you have this up to your face, it will allow you to touch and drag on the screen uh, to where you wanna adjust your focus points. So on this one, you have touch and drag autofocus enabled. That way, when you put the electronic viewfinder up to your face and the screen blacks out, you can put your thumb on it and move the autofocus points around to where you want. So I have that set to enabled. My position method is relative. So you have absolute and relative. So when you put your thumb on here and you start to move it around, when you take your thumb off and you take a picture, when you put your thumb back on the autofocus points in that same spot. If you have it on absolute, I don't think that 
the autofocus point stays where it's at. I think it automatically defaults back to wherever you have this adjusted. So I have mine on relative and I could be completely wrong on that one. Uh, so don't quote me on it. The area in which I want to be active, I have set to the right side of the screen. When I have this up to my face, my, my thumb is just a natural position right here. I can start the autofocus point anywhere and drag it to where I want. Depending upon how you put the camera up to your face, you can do whole panel, right, left, top, bottom. So this is very, very customizable to your positioning of where you want to touch and drag. So again, I have mine set to the right. Grid display, I have mine set to three by three. And the histogram display, uh, brightness, and my display size is small. And I think that's it for this one. And wrench number five, custom shooting modes, reset the camera, copyright information, set your copyright information, put your name and, and some of that information on there. All the other stuff I don't really mess around with. And right now I am on version 1.00 for the M6 Mark II. They're gonna come out sometime this year with version 1.02 and I believe that version is going to have the 24 frames per second when shooting in video mode. And other than that, uh, the custom function buttons here, um, I haven't messed with yet but it's nice that you can customize anything that you want on the camera with these buttons. So that'll also be another video. And I think that takes us to the last one, which is the star menu. And you can actually add custom functions here to things that you normally use. Instead of having to dig through some of the menu items, you can just automatically put them here and you can get to them a lot faster. And that's it. So, I know this was a very basic setup and like I mentioned before at the very, very beginning, as you go through this, you're going to find things that work and don't work for you. I just wanted to show how I set my camera up and how it works into my workflow. By no means is this something that you have to do, but I hope this gave you a starting point of where to begin. If you got any value out of this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up, a like and share it with somebody. And if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and click on that subscribe button. And I have a lot more coming this year, 2020, dealing with this camera. So hope you enjoyed it and I will see you all the next time.